begin uh, our, our chat this evening uh, with, a, uh, with a movie, because it's what we're all going to be doing uh, Sunday anyway. Um, I figured so I'd prepare you for your movie going experience and think about what you're going to be seeing because you're going to go to the movies on Sunday because that's what you're going to be doing. So, and probably so I'm hearing Chinese food and I, I'm, I'm deciding between the Chinese and the sushi. I don't know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to waver about, ooh, see I hear a little sushi over there. So, uh, but I, f I figured I would get you in the mood uh, because that's what you'll be doing. My, my, my family is deciding between um, Ma, 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 what's that? animated movie, Ma, Ma, what's it called? Ma, 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 Moana, Moana and Rogue One. So those are the, those are the two that we're, uh, that we're debating on, Moana or Rogue One. That's what we're gonna be doing. That's all I have to say to you tonight, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Best sermon ever. <laughs> if you're visiting us for the first time, I know you just decided this is the congregation for me. <laughs> The rabbi just spoke for 90 seconds. This is the best thing ever. Just kidding. I got another hour and a half for you right here. All right. <laughs> so if you have seen the movie or not, you should. Uh, it's called Big Fish. Uh, Big Fish, it was uh, by Tim Burton. It was from 2003. Anyone see Big Fish? Big Fish, yeah, th yeah, good, excellent, excellent. So if you have not seen it, it's an excellent movie. It's not a, it's not an old, it's not a Jewish movie, but it's, it's, an, it's a Jewish movie. So um, it's, it's not overtly Jewish, there's nothing Jewish about the movie, but if you watch it and you look at it like I do, which is every movie, uh, I, there's Judaism in all of them. So, uh, although, yeah, so I'm not sure if we'll find it in Rogue One, but it's fine. So um, Big Fish uh, is by Tim Burton. Uh, Ewan McGregor is in it, and so is Albert Finney. I say those are the big three cast that you, that, 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 that you need to know. If you have not seen it, like I said, you should see it. I'm not going to ruin any part of the movie for you. Now, I, I, I wouldn't do that. I'm just going to go in a little bit to the plot and jump back out. So uh, the, the, the plot essentially is um, the character, Ewan McGregor's character uh, and, his, and his father, Albert Finney, and... Uh, Ewan McGregor is trying to determine fact from fiction from his father's life. He's trying to figure, figure out what the stuff his father says is fact and what the stuff his father says is fiction. And so uh, it's, his father is, has no problem exaggerating uh, a lot of details and his son gets very easily frustrated. Uh, by the exaggerations that take place in some of the stories and dream sequences and stories and all these things that happen throughout, throughout the movie. There's sort of this uh, battle of embellishments where the, where the father is trying to embellish some stories and his son is like, really, Dad, is this really what this what it's about? And so it's sort of back and forth, back and forth. So I will leave it at that. I don't want to ruin any more for you, but there's a lot more intricacies and it's pretty fabulous. And so it's sort of this battle of the intricacies of the exaggeration of the stories, of the dream sequences, of going back and forth, and uh, not. And so it flows very nicely into embellishments or non-embellishments into the Torah portion this week regarding some stories that we are going to hear this week. This is perhaps the juiciest uh, start to a Torah portion because it's the, be real, the real beginning, even though last week we got a little of it, this is the real beginning of uh, the story of Joseph and his brothers. And if you uh, do not know the story of Joseph and his brothers, they do not like each other. Uh, they are not fans uh, of, of each other. The brothers are fine with each other, but they do not like Joseph, and Joseph is not that fond of them either, and it's made very clear um, very early on, and particularly perpetuated by their father, who is Jacob, good, uh, and he gives one of the sons, Joseph, uh, a striped coat, if you will. Uh, the, the technicolor dream coat that you know of, nothing in the text says it had color, it just says it was striped. So, but still a very pretty coat and only to one of the children and not to the other children because it was very clear to everyone that Jacob liked Joseph the most. He wasn't, he wasn't shy about it and he said, I like him the most because I like him the most, I'm giving him a coat. No one else gets a coat. Which, uh, which did not help the relationship between the brothers because then they were like, oh, his brother gets the code and I don't get the code and I don't like him anyway and it doesn't go well. That was exactly how it went, by the way, what I just did there. That's exactly how they talk in the text. Oh, it's the code. And, uh, it doesn't help, by the way, that Joseph perpetuates it and says, hey guys, listen to this. 
there's this awesome dream that I had about these sheaves of wheat, and mine was taller than yours, uh, and you all bowed down to my piece of wheat. Hey, guys, isn't that a good story? I got one more for you. I had another dream. It was really, really awesome that the sun, the moon, and the stars, which represent mom, dad, and you guys, were all bowing down to me. Good dream, right, guys? Hey, guys. So they don't like them. <laughs> so much so that they go out into the field, and uh, when they see him from afar, the text actually says, uh, one brother t- turns to the other brothers and says, you know what, let's just kill him. <laughs> Seriously, let's just kill him. He's, he's driving us crazy. There are so many of us. No one likes him. Let's just kill him. And so some of the brothers say, oh, all right, we can kill him. Some of the, and one of the brothers actually steps forward and says, you know what, let's not kill him, let's throw him in a pit. And then we'll sell him. And so that's ultimately what happens. So he gets thrown in a pit, and while, they're, while they walk away from the pit to decide what they're going to do with him, now that he's in the pit, these Midianites walk by and grab him and sell him. And so when they come back to the pit, he's not there. And so they think to themselves, uh-oh. This, yeah, we got to tell dad, exactly. Who's telling, not me. Who's telling dad? I'm not telling dad. And so the stories start. The embellishments start in these stories, and the brothers then take the coat uh, that they took off him anyway. They put animal blood all over it, and they bring it to their father and say, look what happened to your son, essentially. And so uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a terrible moment for Jacob, he is distraught. His son, essentially, he thinks is dead. And so it's this very complicated, very difficult story uh, that goes back to the, the, the main crux of really whatever follows Joseph's life are stories. We'll have them this week, we'll have them next week. It's all these different stories. And the way that he embellishes them or not embellishes them is how, to, how he gets more in trouble or less in trouble, essentially, um, in his life. So our lives, by the way, Uh, are full of dreams. We have the ones we have at night. We have the dreams and aspirations that we want to have in our lives. Though I dream to do this. I dream dream to do this. I I dream to connect this way. I have this this goal in mind that I'm trying to achieve. And so we have all of these, these aspirations for tomorrow, the hopes for the world, uh, for for peace, for inclusion, for freedom, for spirit, for people, uh, for for, for dance. I'm borrowing uh, some some text from uh, Rabbi Bradley Artson. Uh, from this really great book he, he, he wrote called Everyday Torah. And so he says we have all these great moments where we can really have dreams. Not only do we have individual dreams, but we have collective Jewish dreams. Like think of Theodore Herzl, who, who, who said that I, you know, I, I dream for the Zionist nation to, to exist, for Israel to exist. So we have these glorified, beautiful communal dreams that we can also share together. And so these dreams are, 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 are very important. They become, some texts say, they become the sanctuaries, these dreams that really connect us to God and to our community. A beautiful idea of these, of, these, of these dreams. But if we work hard, we can make them a reality. But the problem sometimes with making them a reality is what Joseph falls into. And so we precisely, the problem is that because the dreams that we provide for ourselves, sometimes we see ourselves as so significant and we view our contributions as so substantial that sometimes people around us might be jealous of the dreams that we're trying to fulfill. Because, and if we talk about it, look at this, I had a dream and look what I did. I built this company. I I did this. Look how great I am. I'm fabulous. Look at me. Yay. And so... Sometimes that's wonderful, and sometimes it causes, it causes issues for, for, for other people. And so such was the case for Joseph and his brothers, is that he was sort of grandiosing all these, all, these, all these dreams, and so it perhaps was not the best idea to be sharing them with his, with his brothers because they were not so happy to hear them, essentially. So maybe my dreams are not your dreams, and maybe your dreams are not my dreams. Sometimes we have the collective ones, but the ones personally, sometimes they don't necessarily connect. And so Joseph was captivated by the power of his dreams. He was so captivated that he couldn't stop himself from sharing them, right? The, hey, hey guys, I got this this great dream about all of you bowing down to me. Isn't that great? Yeah, maybe don't share that part with the brothers who already don't like you. And so sort of like in the connection to Big Fish with the struggles 
that the son has with the father on where the embellishments are, where the true parts are, we have to figure, sort of, figure that out for ourselves. And so the challenge to Joseph and to us is to take the time to see our dreams through the eyes of other people, not just, through ourse- not just for ourselves. What may appear to us as a glorious future can seem to other parties involved as a conquest, a conquest, an exploitation, maybe a way of marginalizing someone, perhaps. And so we should, like Joseph, be cautious and, and think about that. Joseph could only see how his dreams affected him and only him. He could not see how they affected his brothers. And so a world without dreams is a bad idea because dreams are fabulous and we're human and they connect to our soul and they drive us and they're fabulous. But a world in which our dreams are projected onto the world without making room for others and for other people's dreams might not be the best idea. And so I invite us on the Shabbat because it's a conglomeration of beautiful Shabbatot, Jewish, Jewish and secular, right? That we are, uh, it's Shabbat A, which is fabulous. We're heading into Hanukkah, which is this idea of rededication and reconnecting and of light and of bringing light, in, light into darkness. It's a beautiful idea that the rabbis discussed perhaps when they created the Hanukkiah, if they would have all eight candles lit on the first night and then go down one candle or go up one candle. And so they decided, no, 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 let's not take away light. Let's add light. Let's bring light into our world. So on this Shabbat, which is a beautiful Shabbat, entering into uh, another beautiful Jewish connection for us, a rededication for us, celebration of our freedom with the Maccabees uh, against the Syrian Greeks, and then finally into a secular sort of new start, into our 2017, into 2017 secular start, where we're, head, we're heading into. I invite all of us to sort of think of our dreams, think of our aspirations, Think of all the things that we, that we connect to, the stories, the ones that maybe we use to embellish because they're just good, or the ones that we don't embellish, like, like in the movie, the ones that we choose to maybe share when we're appropriate, and the ones maybe not to share when that's so appropriate because we don't want to upset all of Joseph's brothers. And so on this Shabbat with uh, Hanukkah in 2017, uh, I invite all of us to think of how do we share our dreams and how do we share them positively and how do we share them with ourselves, with our families, and with others. Shabbat Shalom.